Hey guys, we're at the Ontario Regiment Museum. I'm Johan, and we're with the most important man of Canada's most important tank museum. Uh, Al, you're the president of the museum. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what's going on behind us? Well, this is one of many different vehicles we have here. This is the newest acquisition. This is a, a chieftain. This came from uh, England. This was uh, one of their main battle tanks that they had in service from the mid-60s right up to the uh, early 90s, and then it went out of service. You'll probably notice this is a very weird-looking, non-traditional camouflage. This is camouflage. It's called urban camouflage. It uh, was actually used in one location only, and that was with the Berlin Brigade. So during the Cold War in Berlin, you had a lot of armor stationed there. And Berlin basically is an urban area. There's no countryside. There's not a lot of trees and forest. So they wanted, uh, their, they did not want their tanks to be green and black, and they would stick out like a sore thumb. So they actually painted it in broken uh, colors, as you see here. And these are the most common colors that seem to blend in with buildings. And, and bridges and, and thing, structures you see in the urban area. And this became quite effective. And there was, oh, squadrons of these tanks done up this way. It was only done in one place. It was suggested by a trooper in one of the regiments over there, the British regiments. And, uh, and that went up through his CO and it went right to the powers to be. And they said, look, we need something. If we're going to defend ourselves against the Russians coming into Berlin during the Cold War, we need to have some better uh, type, type of camouflage. So this is kind of outside the box, and I think it's rather cool. So it was an addition to the uh, to the museum. This is a Mark 10, and uh, they started off, you know, obviously the first Mark, and they kept upgrading and upgrading. This one actually has what's called still the Still Brew Armor upgrade. Two gentlemen uh, by the name of Brew and Still. You think Still Brew is something to do with a brewery, but it's, it's not. Uh, and there's actually added on armor to, uh, to this, to, and this brings it up to another mark. And there's also uh, additional uh, gun sighting mechanisms that enhanced it, and that in increased the, the different marks. Uh, and it went right up to mark 12. So this is a 10. We have another chieftain coming. It's a mark uh, 11, and it's coming up. And uh, we have it uh, coming over with a T-3485, so we have the two vehicles coming from, uh, from one, uh, um, well, collector, you could say. We've acquired them and a ton of parts for these things. I don't know if this is probably the only running chieftain in Canada. I'm, there's okay. probably something in, in the U.S. I, I can't think of where it would be in the U.S. But we will have two running chieftains, uh, and that will be quite a feat to have, uh, to add to our fleet. It's a growing fleet. Um, we have uh, a Hetzer coming. Uh, you probably notice we have uh, two Hanna mags and a Panzer III that we've, we've just recently brought on. So this is the year of uh, acquisitions. We've been buying about five or six new vehicles, uh, very select vehicles for the museum. And then we'll be hunkering down because, frankly, we're running out of space. We have no more space to store all these things. So now we have to grow, and in the next three to five years, we'll be on a fundraising mission where we're actually going to be looking for donors and patrons and sponsors to help us grow. And the, Oshawa, the city of Oshawa is looking at giving us much more additional land here to expand our tank arena and to put up a bigger building. This is called our MVCC, our Motor Vehicle Conservation uh, Center. And this building itself, really, uh, it's our main building, but this will be in the future just where we store vehicles that we're not displaying and preparing vehicles to go out into the tank arena. So we've got a lot on the works, and uh, it's people like you guys that really help support us and get us out in the social media and let people know. We have uh, tank Saturdays all throughout the summer. It's the first Saturday of every month, and we put on a big show. We got one coming up day after tomorrow, this coming Saturday. And uh, it's called uh, Blitzkrieg. We're actually going to feature German vehicles and show how they impacted drastically the beginning of the war, specifically France. Uh, in 40 and then Russia in 41 when there was just this massive uh, um, blitzkrieg which which brought you know all kinds of uh, new strategies to warfare and it was quite successful initially. Ironically enough it was a reverse blitzkrieg that the Russians did to the Germans. They just overwhelmed them with the same thing that the Germans did to the Russians at the beginning and that was the end of the war. So they taught us all a lesson. 
So Al, you mentioned about fundraising in the future. Can you tell us a bit about how we can get involved in the, well not us how, but tell the viewers how they might be able to get involved with the museum or help you guys out? Well, the more people that know, we're online, Ontario Regiment Museum, and uh, we have a Facebook page, and we're quite active. Come out to our events. Have a look and see what we're doing. It's uh, definitely, you know, every, we have about 140 volunteers. If you live locally and you want to get involved with us, um, again, like I said, 140 volunteers. We only have two full-time staff, and the rest are basically volunteers that make this whole place run. So if you want to help us, come out and get involved with us. If you want to help us, come on up to some of our events. See what we're all about. Uh, we bring history to life. We don't, you don't just see a tank sitting there. We go out in the field and we show people. We even did a winter warfare in February. We weren't sure how that would go over because it was damn cold and we had a lot of snow. But we had uh, several hundred people show up. It was pretty, pretty awesome. So it's the beginning. We're expanding an awful lot and there's a lot to be done. This was a lot of fun this morning. We got this thing. This thing came this morning at about 8 a.m. I was here at 8 a.m. and we unloaded this thing, fired it up. It hasn't been running in over a month. You know, we're still covered in dirt from climbing all in and out of it. Uh, there's work to be done on this. It's an amazing piece. And we've got several more really amazing pieces coming. So come on out and see what we're all about. You'd be more than welcome. Well, thanks a lot for the interview, Al. And guys, I can definitely vouch for Al. I don't think there is a single museum in Canada that runs as many vehicles as you guys and is so passionate about getting things running and not just having them sitting in a museum. Thanks. Thanks, that is so true. We look at Bobbington in the UK as being the best museum in the world, and their displays are second to none. But they field 40 vehicles. We field 100 vehicles running. They keep 40 running, but their displays are amazing. But we're all about living history. And uh, to that end, uh, uh, we're networking and we're getting, you know, we're reaching out, we're interacting with a lot of other museums. Again, thank you so much. All right. Have a good day, Al. You too.